How to use stable diffusion animation change background and character outfit colors easily. Uh, we are going to walk through how to do this in Comfy UI workflow. This is a long video, so grab a drink, sit back, be patient to watch. And I have updated my animation workflow, tidy up the workflow diagram with less spaghetti flying around. Thanks to some true AI friends here giving suggestion and feedback, together we keep improving better and better. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show the whole new layout design. And before that, we have to download this Comfy UI custom node. And this custom node is basically we have the set and get note for distributing the data to other custom group. And also, I'm bringing back the mass backgrounds groups into the workflow and I have enhanced that. And also the IPA group 2 for multiple image into one IP adapter encoding image for very unique styles that we have. And I have also created this kind of workflow in other workflow that upload in open art previously. So you can check that out. Uh, that one is for text to image. So thank you for one of my AI friends. And he suggests us to have more modularity styles with the set and get custom notes here. And then this is the place for preview. So I leave this space empty and we have the LCM notes here. That is for if you want to use LCM, and then you will enable that. If you don't want it, just click bypass the can't. Right now, in this example, I'm using the LCM to just run a quick demo here. So this orange group is the base loader group. Basically, I am going to passing the model from this base. So I call this model from base. And right in this group, we are going to have the checkpoint loader and we set the width and height of the image for image resize for overall the video's image frames. And then also we have the VAE loader that is optional. If you have VAE include in your checkpoint, then you don't have to use this. And this is the seed numbers. So let me arrange this a little better. So yeah, there you go. Uh, the width and height are going to set as global values here for the video's dimensions. So I have passed this to the set video width and set video height to over all of these diagrams, which they have multiple settings for width and height. So pass from the load videos, I have the image size node. So everything from this loader groups are going to pass to other groups in here. So for example, we have, let's see, in here we have the models from IPA2 and then Usually I will put the output set node on the right lower corner and then the get groups I will put on the left upper corner. So that will be the format of this on each groups. How am I going to lay it out? And yeah, this is basically all tidied up very neat and all groups have their own unique features. And for instance, like this one is dedicating for face swap and we are getting from the image frames after the first stage sampling. And then do facial recognitions and pass the image, the face image, replacing the character's image. And then we pass the image stage one face as a result to passing out to other groups to handle this. So usually I'm going to use the detailers to receive the stage one face WAP data. That is the set of image frames and pass to the image. We will handle the bouncing box detector in here. So I have the face detector. You can use hands or character detector if you prefer. That will be enhanced different part of the character's body. So in this sample detector for LMA diff, this is going to allows you to handle multiple image. So there will be a list of image passing into this sample detector. Now, this is different from their normal sample detector from segmentation's impact pack. That one is usually only handles single image. But this one, we have the one called image frames. So it's going to be handle multiple image in one processing. And also we have a simple detector for pipes. This will allows you to set and other segmentations, streamline the workflows in multiple segments. But then right now, just using one simple detector to handle the image frame is good enough for animate diff. So in this group, after the detect, we pass to the detailer sampling process and then processing each segment areas of each image frames. Then after this, we are going to pass all the segments to the segment paste. 
So this segment paste is like the mouse copy and paste. Basically, it will paste the new segment from the new generate image onto the original list of image frames. So it will be replacing the previous image from this list of image. So that is basically the mechanism of this detailer groups. And this two yellow line is passing the positive and negative conditions from the first stage sampling. And in here, we have a reroute for passing two lines and the global clips layer just remain the same. It's getting from the loader groups. And this to basic pipe is going to be receiving all the basic information and data from the loader groups as well. So this conditions from this yellow line of the reroute is going also to the case sampler in first sampling stage. And then let's zoom out and we see this one, um, I label this to first stage sampling. So this will be generating the first videos, animations of overall of this workflow, which is this one. As you can see, the face is not clear. It's kind of blurry. And if you want to enhance that, you will pass it to the detailers to enhance the face S. And then we set the clip layer. This is the notes that we are going to passing out to the global and then going through the LoRa notes here. And LoRa notes, we are using the LCM LoRa in here. So this yellow line will be the clips layer for that one. And then this is the negative prom and the green one is the positive proms. And then we are passing the conditions of positive and negative to the first control net, which is the realistic line art. Now this line art, we are getting the segment image mass group. That segment image mass is basically removing the backgrounds. It's only remaining the main characters from the videos, pass it all the image to here. And this applied control, net processing will be showing all the image frames. Process it in the line uh, art manner, and this is the preview output. And then the next one is the open post. Actually, we are using DW post, and we are getting the set of image from the loader resize image, which is in the loader groups from this image resize. So the initial videos and then pass to image resize. And after resize the image, we are going to the open pose control net. And you see the happy skeleton in here. The DW open pose is detecting all the character movement and transform into happy skeleton here. So the positive negative keep continuing to the third control net. And this is optional control net. I have disabled this one bypass this control net at this demo and you can enable this if you want to it depends on the situations you can change the type of control net in this last control net groups here because it very depends on what kind of videos you are going to generate if you using this like my example i have previously select candies and if you want depth to be more layer for your videos, like cinematic videos, you can use that as well. So this is the third control net in this group. And uh, as you can see, the candies I have previously used, and maybe you can use other control net in here as well. And for SDXL, remember to select SDXL control net. And maybe like my last videos, I'm using the death in here to have more layers feel for cinematic style videos. So this is basically the three control net. Just like how we used to run in automatic 11011, we use three control net to have a better pose and image quality of the post. But basically for the dance videos I usually do, I use line art and DW open pose is good enough. And then the last one is going to be passing to the animated processing the motion in these animations. And we have the animated loader. And above that, we have the get models. So in this one, I have just selected from IPA group two. So I have defined the models from base model, from the IPA one, from IPA two, and also the face ID. So this is multiple model path data path that you can select in this one back to the animate diff loader. And then the animate diff loader are going to output the set model uh, element diff data and that will be optional to use. And in this group, 
Lastly is the case sampler. And of course the case sampler, we need the VN code and get image resize for all the image frames. And actually this is duplicate from the control net. So let me organize this one. We don't need the double get image resize notes in here. So we can use just one get image resize notes. And there you go. We have less duplicate note in here. So tight it up and we have less. Okay, so the seat number, the seat number are going to be the global values of this workflow that I set in the loaders group. So here we pass all the models, positive, negative, latent image and seat number to the K sampler. So this is the first stage of the sampling process. After that, that will be passing to. So yeah, let's go back to the loaders group first. So this CRC will be setting the seat numbers here. So once you set these numbers in here, it will pass to this set seat numbers node. And other groups will enable to receive the numbers from these values. So the seat numbers after the VAE decode it will output the image from stage one. So this is the set of image frames from stage one. After all this processing text prompt, three control net and the case sampler. And here's the video combining all the image frames and it will have the preview of the first stage of sampling videos. So, usually I use the reactor face swap in here to receive the first stage of the image frames and pass it into these face swap groups and then processing each image frames to enhance the face of the characters by using my AI generate image characters. So, there you have it. This is the output of these groups. So this video combines also like a preview of this result after the reactor face swap. And then lastly, what I usually do, I will enhance a little bit of the face. So I will go to the detailer for face this group here to receive the list of image from the reactor face swap group. So right here, we set the image from the face swap and then we get the image from face swap in the detailer groups. So as we have mentioned before, the detailer, how we process. So this is the three processing that will be going to be the output of it. Stage one sampling and then the face swap group. And then, yeah, you can also use the stage one sampling result. If you don't want to use the reactor face swap, it's optional. You can choose in the drop down menu and then it just go through all the sampling steps for the detailers. And then lastly, it will be outputting the detailer set of image frames in here. Well, that will be optional if you want to expand this workflow. So I have set this as the output for this group. But usually we have the final result in here for the videos combined. So let's go to run one examples here with you guys together. So as you can see, the set segmentation master image for the line art. This is totally removed the background from the original source image. As you can see the buildings and the walls from behind the characters, we have cleaned it up. So there's only remaining characters for the line art to generate our animations result. And then as you can see the result, we have another background image or the backgrounds for the videos and the text prompt. Usually we use the text prompt to control the backgrounds or the character's outfit. So in this example, I'm using the text prompts to control the character's outfit, just mainly using that one to do that and let the IP adapter to control the backgrounds. So let's go to here. Yes, mostly the IP adapter or the models from the base model loader is influenced much of the elements. So when you choosing in the element diff, this model here, it will influence how the result will looks like. So if you choose from the loader by default, the loader, it will not involve any IP adapter image influence. So look at above, we have the IP adapter one and IP adapter two, and mostly of it is loading from the base model. And then the last one, 
this yellow one is the mass image to removing the backgrounds of the original source image and every output I have set up as the model's IP face, like this one face eyed. So this is only doing the face ID work as we have previously explained about how we use the face ID groups. And I just reorganized the layer of this workflow to be more modularity styles. And then let's go to, so here we have two IP adapters. So for the first one, IPA1, this is for the single image IP influencing and then this multiple image. I have used that for text to image previously and I just include this multiple image in this workflow. I'm testing it and I see there are not a lots of videos in YouTube are talking about this encode IP adapter image nodes, which enable you to run multiple images in one IP adapter. But I want to try it out with this workflow currently. I have created IPA2. So these IPA2 groups are going to be for multiple image and I'm still testing this IPA2 currently. So mostly I'm using the IPA1 to control the backgrounds of the animations. So in this example, I'm setting the fireworks as the background and then output the set IPA1 models. And then in the element diff loader, I will choose this from the models from IPA1. So this will be using the IPA1 result of this IP adapter that have the image influence of our image. It after the result generated and as you can see the IPA2, we have multiple image in here. And this one I have tested with the segment mass image result which is from this yellow group, but it's still in testing, it's not stable yet. Because you have multiple image, it's kind of hard to control what kind of style you expect it will output as a result. So let's click one generate and see how we are going to looks like. But before we wait, hold on. Before we generate this, let's disable the other IP adapter first so we don't have to load extra things. So our first demo here, we will use the IPA one. Okay. So the fireworks are going to be the backgrounds of our upcoming result. And let me also in the text prompt to emphasize the fireworks as well. Then we have more effect from our upcoming result here. I will fast forward this one. So in the meanwhile, I have to explain this IPA1 and IPA2. When you use this, do not use double IP adapter. Like you don't want to confuse the AI to use both IPA groups together. That will be too much image prompts for one generate image. So yeah, if you use either one of this, you want to disable the other IP adapters group and also the face ID groups as well. So again, less is more. Uh, you don't want to include too much image in the IP adapter to confuse the AI. Otherwise, you will receive like a monster result. So we have the first sampling result here. So let's bring it side by side with the IP adapter one. As you can see, the background's heavily influenced by the IP adapter groups one, which is the fireworks and the pattern of the fireworks really looks like the source image in IP adapter. You see the yellow fireworks on the upper corner and then the purple color on the lower side. And let's side by side with the source videos. And look at that. It's totally changed. The outfit of it is also changed. And I like this reflection on the floor in here. It looks like a mirror and reflecting the fireworks from the sky. Pretty good result this time actually using LCM and then we can get this kind of result is pretty good. Okay, so we have the detailer also finished processing and yeah, the detailer is also enhancing the face and it looks like we can upload this on YouTube. Yeah, but then this is a demo for like a one second. So maybe I will try to load the whole videos as like a 10 to 20 seconds dance videos and you guys can check it out in the YouTube short sections to see the full demo of these animations. 
and this is the face swap after the stage one. Oh, actually I have choosing the wrong sampling in the detailers. I should use the LCM as well and the LCM scheduler. Also, I select the wrong one. Okay, next time let's try another example to have a correct sampling method. And also let's try one demo that we don't use any IP adapter. Okay, we got to disable all the IP adapter here. And then we go to only using the remove backgrounds and in the text prompt, just only controlled by the text prompt here. Let's say the dancers dancing on the street, right? And then travel prompts. Basically, I don't need to do too much. Let's try. If the flower is dropping, maybe that will work. Uh, but sometimes some prompts are going to be ignored by the AI. So you might need to test again or twist the text prompt a little. But yeah, hopefully they have some effect from one of these travel prompts. And then lastly, we are going to select the right models in Animate Diff. That will be the base models from this workflow. So let's click one generate and wait for the result. Actually, this will be pretty fast because we are going to use LCM this time. And I set it very low sampling steps, so it's not going to take too much time. But then in this experiment, I just want to show you guys that you can control the outfit. Very simple by using the text prompt and also the backgrounds of the characters after we do the mass remove backgrounds and is easily to control the backgrounds of this animation videos here. As you can see, I'm putting the same as the previous one. We use yellow jacket and blue jeans. And there you go. Yeah, we have the first sampling result here. So basically the wall it looks like on the street is acceptable, like the AI is showing this. So after the detailers, it's quite okay. Not too perfect, but yeah, let's try another videos instead of this one. So I have more different style of look of this animation's workflow result. So in this example and other dance videos, as you can see, the dancer is white shirt and blue jeans. And then I have the result from here. It's a shorts and kind of like a tank top, summer styles, dressing in the animations videos. And that is heavily influenced by the characters in the IP adapter. So it's very similar to the IP adapter image character. And all the outfits is cloning. It's almost like bringing from the IP adapter to the result videos. And also I have emphasized that in the text prompt as well to get more influence for the generate result. So there you have it. It is going to be totally looks different from the source videos. And then also the fireworks in here, it doesn't look like the previous example fireworks. You see the pattern is not the same as the previous one because we don't have the fireworks in IP adapter. It's just only a little flames on the top for the background from the text prompt. But then you see the outfit and the character's outfit. Everything is very heavily influenced by the IP adapter. So yeah, that is it for today's videos. And I hope you guys like this update of this workflow. And I will be uploading this to Patreon for our supporters early access. And once this is stable, everyone test it happy. And I will be update this version in open art for everyone. So hope you guys enjoy these videos and get some inspiration about AI animation video. I will see you guys in the next videos. Take care and have a nice day. Bye.